I'm Randy Leedy, your New Testament Greek guy. You can see my website there at the bottom of the screen. A bit of background. I've been focusing my efforts this year on promoting sentence diagramming as an exegetical exercise and also publishing the set of Greek New Testament sentence diagrams that I drew for BibleWorks software back around 2005 based on the Nestle Aland Greek text. With the closure of Bible Works in 2018, the company kindly granted me joint rights to publish the diagrams in other forms. Earlier this year, I released a PDF version of those diagrams, and I also contracted with Logos Bible Software to produce a conversion of the diagrams to the SBL Greek New Testament text. Logos plans to include those diagrams in base packages at the silver level and above, beginning with the forthcoming Logos version 9. As a spin-off of this project, by the time this screencast goes public, I expect to have released a PDF version of those SBL Greek text diagrams as well. And Logos is also planning to publish the Nestle Elan set later on. The existence of these sentence diagrams based on these two editions of the text naturally raises the question of what the difference between them is especially since the terms on which I've been granted license to use the SBL text allow me to offer those diagrams at a lower price than the Nestle Elan set. The purpose of this video is to inform the sentence diagramming public about this difference so they can make wise purchase choices and offer wise guidance to friends or students who may need help deciding. And let me thank Rob Plummer and The Daily Dose for providing me this platform for communication. Much appreciated. Okay, how extensive are those differences? The short answer is that the differences in wording between the two texts turn out to have far less effect on the diagrams than the differences in punctuation do. Now, let's get down into the weeds a little bit. The wording differences are not especially numerous. The website for the SBL edition indicates something more than 540 variation units in which its wording differs from that of Nestle Aland. That's a bit more than an average of twice per chapter. I found that quite a number of these differences required no change at all in the diagramming. All they required were simple word substitutions. Other wording differences did require a recasting of grammatical structure ranging from trivial tweaking to a much larger scale revision. I'll give an example later in this video. Differences in punctuation, though, are a very different story. These were numerous. I would guess that they number between four and 5,000. The majority of them require no difference in diagramming, but most chapters of the New Testament have at least two or three differences in sentence breaks, which obviously will produce differences in the diagrams and some lesser differences also required a revision, such as moving an adverbial phrase from one clause to another. My guess is that somewhere around five times per chapter on average, probably at least that and a little more, uh, the SBL and Nestle Elan texts differ in a way that affects the diagramming. What this means is that people who want to use these diagrams seriously and do not consider themselves to be competent critics of sentence diagrams who can handle these differences in stride really need to get the set of diagrams really need to get the set of diagrams for the text that they prefer all right now let's look at a couple of examples of these differences here's the nestle alan diagram for 1 corinthians 2 3 through 5 the corresponding diagram in the sbl greek testament is much longer Notice that it includes verses 2 through 5 rather than just 3 through 5. So all of this material at the top stands alone as a separate sentence in the Nestle Elan set of diagrams. Now let's look down at the middle portion. Paul says, according to the Nestle Elan text, My word and my proclamation were not in persuasive words of wisdom. Notice the bracketed word logois and the bracketed letter sigma at the end of pathois. The SBL text follows the reading without those bracketed portions, and the construction comes out differently. The word from the path root, instead of being a dative plural adjective modifying logois, 
is now a dative singular noun functioning as the object of n, not in persuasion of wisdom. So here's an example of a wording difference that affects the diagramming. Colossians 3.16 is a familiar verse. In the SBL Greek New Testament, it reads, Let the word of Christ be dwelling in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, in grace, perhaps in gratitude, singing in your hearts to God. This is a case where the punctuation of the text affects which clause various modifiers belong to. So let's begin by highlighting the verbs. We have the imperative dwell. We have a series of participles, teaching and admonishing. And then we also have another participle, singing. In the Nestle Alon text, the first significant punctuation is with plusios, which you see is absent in the SBL text. SBL has a semicolon after Sophia, which is absent from the Nestle Alon text. So in effect, that comma in Nestle Alon has moved over after the phrase in all wisdom. Similarly, after Heautus in the Nestle Alon text is a comma, but not in the SBL text. The SBL text has commas separating the items in the series of musical genres. Those are not relevant for the grammatical structure. But there is a comma after in grace that is absent from the Nestle Alon text. So again, it's as though that mark of punctuation has moved from its position after heautus to a position after the phrase and carity. Now, how does this affect the diagramming? In the Nestle Alon text, in all wisdom is a modifier for the participles teaching and admonishing. In the SBL text, it instead modifies the preceding imperative, an oiketo. The series of musical genre, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, in the Nestle Alon text modifies singing. In the SBL text, it modifies teaching and admonishing one another. And similarly with the phrase in grace or in gratitude, modifying singing in Nestle Alon, but teaching and admonishing in the SBL text. This leaves singing in your hearts to God without any further modifiers in the SBL text. Personally, I'm not so impressed with the SBL's choice of punctuation here. They explain in their front matter that they follow the Westcott and Hort text closely, and that's whose punctuation they have adopted here, where in my opinion they would have been better to go another direction more like Nestle Elan. But regardless of the merits of this particular punctuation, you can see that it would be easy to get confused if you were looking at one text and the other set of diagrams. So here's my little plan to encourage those who prefer the Nestle Alon text to go ahead and pay a little extra for those diagrams. First, an appeal to support your favorite text. When you buy the Nestle Alon diagrams, a significant royalty goes to the publisher of that text and will support ongoing editorial work for future editions. To ease the pain in the wallet, I've been offering discount coupons for the Nestle Alon diagrams frequently, and I plan to continue doing so. For the SBL diagrams, I plan to set a significantly lower price and then do minimal discounting. So I hope Nestle Alon readers will be attracted by the discount to go ahead and pay for the diagrams that will best support your work in that text. And frankly, after working through the conversion process, I must say that I really do prefer the Nestle Alon text and its punctuation. But, of course, I also realize how important it is to be economical, especially in second and third world settings, and SBL certainly wins that game. I shouldn't fail to mention also that the United Bible Society's Greek text, the UBS text, is highly similar to the Nestle Alon text, so the Nestle Alon diagrams should also serve readers of that text well. Now a moment ago I mentioned coupons. DDOG20 will get you a 20% discount on the Nestle Alon diagrams through October 10th, 2020. But whichever set you may buy, if you buy any at all, I pray that they will serve you well in support of your labors in the Word.